All right. Hello and good evening, everyone. And this is the Applying for the Kiwanis CNH Foundation Scholarship webinar, specifically for our Circle K members. And so first to introduce myself, I am Austin. I'm currently a fourth year at UC Berkeley, double majoring in economics and political economy. And I am this year's district member recognition and education chair. Last term, I was uh, my club's uh, membership development education chair, as well as the executive assistant of the district md &E committee. And two years ago, during the online year, I was Berkeley Circle Case Club Treasurer. And specifically for the purposes of this webinar, uh, for the CNH Children's Fund Scholarship, I actually applied for this scholarship twice. Um, once in 2019 when I was a key club and graduated from high school, and in this past spring in 2022. And both times I applied, I got some scholarship money. So I, I'm really excited to give you all my tips and uh, lessons I learned both times I applied to hopefully help you all get that money for your tuition. And a fun fact about myself is that I used to play the classical guitar. All right, so first off of just a brief overview introduction of the scholarship, it was established by the past Kiwanis governor, uh, Kenneth C. Ford, MD, in 1980 to basically assist the service leadership programs, which is basically Key Club, Keywinds, and Circle K in achieving their education goals. And typically, uh, the Children's Fund provides around 75,000 to 100,000 in scholarships every year to uh, graduating Key Club and Keywinds high school seniors and current Circle K members. And so actually in 2022, this past spring, um, over $119,000 was awarded in total to 70 recipients, but out of those 70 recipients, only 15 of them were Circle K members. And so typically for uh, the senior children's fund when it comes to getting applicants and uh, handing out scholarship money, um, not that many Circle K members actually apply. So if you were to apply, uh, you might actually have a good chance of getting the scholarship yourself. And so uh, now I'm just going to go over like the basics of the scholarship application. And I already sent the link in the chat. So I recommend that you just open and follow along as I uh, walk you through this application. So uh, first, in order to be eligible to earn the scholarship, you need to be a dues pay member of your club which is in good standing, meaning that both district and international dues are paid. And uh, you must be continuing uh, your graduation for at least one more semester or quarter, meaning you cannot be graduating this fall or in spring of 2023. And uh, there is a minimum GPA of 2.5 on a 4.0 scale. And as you can see on the application, the deadline is uh, in, a, in, a, in the way long future from now on Friday, February 17th at 2023. And it states clearly at the top of the page that they will not accept any late applications. And essentially, uh, you're evaluated based on uh, your involvement and contributions to Circle K, um, your school's campus, and your uh, local community. And typically, awards range from $750 to $2,500. And you can apply uh, multiple times uh, for this scholarship and you can re receive money multiple times as well, uh, like me. And so uh, just to give you a better idea of what you'll be evaluated on when you fill out the scholarship and submit it. So about 50% of your application score will essentially be your involvement in Circle K, their fancy term for it is service leadership program service. 25% um, of your application score will be your involvement, your service in your school's activities outside of Circle K. And 25% is your service and your involvement in your community outside of school. And so just some helpful materials that will be great for you to have on, on hand when filling out the application. So you will need to submit a copy of your official transcripts mailed to the Kiwanis District Office. Um, they do take electronic transcripts. 
Um, that's what I did uh, personally this past spring, but it must be sent directly from your school. And uh, actually for me, I when, when I submitted my electronic transcript, I literally did it on the, the day it was due. And I was actually kind of worried that it'll arrive late, but uh, luckily I learned that that when, when you submit electronically, it's pretty much instantaneously. But I just recommend that you submit it electronically like um, in February before, <laughs> but not on the day it was due. And yeah, and it would be helpful to have, uh, but not necessary, uh, a copy of your individual master record sheet, your MRS page with your attendance to Circle K events and projects. Um, this is something that your club secretary should have. And it'll be also helpful to have an updated resume on hand. But both of these things, they are just helpful to have. It's not required at all for uh, the scholarship application. And I think there was a hand raised. Uh, somebody, somebody that was left? me, yeah. I okay. had a question about sending in the electronic transcript. Uh, I thought that sending in an official transcript costs money, but I wasn't sure for Berkeley at least. Is that the case? Yes, I believe. As a Berkeley student, I, I think I'm pretty sure, yes, it does cost money to send electronic transcripts, but if I remember correctly, the cost is not that high. It was relatively inexpensive for me to submit my electronic transcripts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, moving on. So um, here's just some basic demographic information uh, that is asked on the scholarship application, uh, specifically noteworthy, um, the school you're currently attending, the school you'll be attending next year. Um, if you have four year institution, you might I just put probably put your current institution for both of those slots, um, your cumulative GPA, and if you have a job or you work for a week, how many hours per week do you work? Are your parents members of Kiwanis? How many years you've been involved in the Kiwanis family? So like, if you if you were involved in Key Club, K Kids, Builders Club, et cetera, before Circle K, and have you previously received a foundation scholarship? And also your Circle K, a local division. I see most of us here are Berkeley. So uh, you will put Golden Gate, for Khadija, you'll put Desert Oasis, Emily, you'll be Paradise, and Brian, your Central Coast. Uh, official club names, is, it is basically just the name of, name of your school, but you don't have to include the word Circle K and uh, your sponsoring Kiwanis Club. And you don't have to uh, include the words Kiwanis Club when you type it in. And since but most of us here are from Berkeley. Our sponsor Kiwanis Club is Berkeley Kiwanis. So you just put Berkeley. And next, I'll be moving on to uh, essentially your involvement in Circle K, which takes up about 50% of your application score. And so this is what it will actually look like on uh, the scholarship application. And to go about filling out this section, um, Really, the instructions are pretty self-explanatory, and, and the examples are so. Essentially, you would list service completed as a Circle K member, uh, any projects that you chaired, any service projects that you organized, events that you went to, offices held, any recognition awards you received, etc. And so, specifically for the club service section, you could only list up to 20 service projects and events, but it is definitely not limited to just this year. You can list any service events that you're involved in starting from your very first year in Circle K. And, um, but keep in mind that each cell is limited to 200 characters per cell and provided by the application. You just follow that basic format, event name, colon, the time, colon, and task you achieved. And I recommend in this task achieved that you try to include some specific numbers like, um, the number of people you serve, the number of items you produced. And so for me, uh, when I uh, filled out, when I filled out this application submitted, an example I did was uh, something from my freshman year. I was involved in like a community soup kitchen, and I just mentioned I completed four service hours total. Yeah. Um, the next section is uh, Kiwanis family attendance. And this is essentially um, um, events that involve like include like people outside your school so division and district events as well as events with the other Kiwanis family branches so Kiwanis, 
Key Club, Builders Club, K Kids, Action Club, etc. Again, not limited to this year. And you're limited to 100 characters for sale, and you follow a similar format. Uh, example of a Circle K event I submitted on my 2022 application, just like an inner club social during online. And I just, honestly, my description was very, very basic. I just played online games with uh, SFSU. Um, next is leadership positions. And so for leadership positions, I know that you could you can list up to 10 um we can, we can list up to leadership positions um but i'm going to say this again at the end of my presentation but you at all means do not have to fill it all 10 slots in order to have a good chance to receive this application um i i know quite a few people who didn't actually did not list anything in leadership position section and they still end up receiving uh the scholarship so do not uh, worry or be intimidated that they allocate all this much space. You don't have to fill in all the space allocated. And so specifically for leadership positions, um, you basically follow the format they provide, like position, your year cert, and whether or not your position was elected or appointed. Um, so um, you, you typically don't need to like list your task achieved because I'm pretty sure um, for, especially for the selection committee, they that are familiar with Circle K and they kind of already get a feeling that most Circle K presidents, for example, probably have the same leadership responsibility. So that's not really necessary. And you're also limited to only 75 characters per cell. And and like um you don't don't really don't really worry about putting in some like official like officer position if you're like a general member. Um like for me specifically, um like UC Berkeley, we have like we have an open committee structure and I just called myself a publications committee member because I went out to a few publications committee meetings and yeah that's that's an appointed um, position. Hmm. Um, next is awards and recognition and so uh, you can only list up to 10 awards that you received in Circle K. Um, it could be any time throughout your Circle K career and uh, like the last section, it's only limited to 75 characters for sell. And you just follow a basic format. Um, like what's the award you earned and when did you earn it? Um, so maybe if, I know example for UC Berkeley Circle K, we do a, a member of the month. So if you're a member of the month, feel free to mention that. I remember you, Sabrina, you were a member of the month one time. Remember to put that on the scholarship application. And yeah, you tweet that. You were our club's new member of the year. That's an award you can put on the scholarship application. Okay, so that ra basically wraps up um, the involvement circle case section. That's uh, like the longest section and service to school and service to community are uh, shorter compared to the uh, the circle K section. So for service to school, it's 25% of your application score and it's structured similarly to uh, the previous circle K sections. Um, so you would list, oh, and you would list up to um, 10 involvements outside of Circle K in your school's campus. So essentially instructions, uh, you just follow that, indicate offices held other than Circle K and participation in other organizations and projects. Um, so um, like, like the previous Circle K section, you're not limited to uh, this year. Feel free to mention any organizations you're a part of starting your first year in college and uh, you're limited to 100 characters per cell. And uh, you would follow the um, essentially a similar format like the other sections, the organization name, uh, the years you're involved in your task achieved. And I recommend that if you have the space to tr try to work in some leadership positions and um, also all numbers as well is often a good thing. Um, and here's just an example that I put. Um, yeah. And the last section, which is service to community, uh, and like the service to school section, is 25% of your application score. Uh, this is what it looks like on the scholarship application. And again, very similar to the other sections. You would, for this section, you would indicate organizations and projects you are involved in through your religious institution, other community service groups not affiliated with Kiwanis or your school, and any, entire, any activities you accomplished on your own. Um, so for this section, you can only list up to five um, activities outside of school and Circle K. Um, 
feel free to uh, not restrict yourself to this year, but keep in mind you only like there is a character limit like all the other sections of this for the section 100 characters. Um, and a format example uh, you would follow that's provided by the application, the activity, scouting, colon, the years you're involved, and then any tasks that you achieved. All right, so we are reaching to the end of this uh, presentation, but thank you all so much for sticking with me, but I still have some more helpful information for you all. Um, so just some valid things to know, as I, um, oh, as I mentioned earlier, you do not need to fill all the sections in cells or have a good chance of earning a scholarship. I know so many Circle K members who left some sections completely blank and they are still awarded a scholarship. And it says so um, a lot of times on the scholarship app itself that uh, please avoid duplicating activities in multiple sections. And a helpful uh, resource that the district is happy to provide for to you all is actually uh, this bit.ly link. Um, I know it says 21, 22 at the end, but it is updated for this year and I actually show it to you all right now. And I recommend specifically to uh, use the CNH Foundation Scholarship Template linked in the doc to help you prepare for your activities. And this was created by our current governor, Emily. So yeah, this is basically what the doc looks like. And uh, feel free to use this template, make a copy. And yeah, and it'll it'll list all the instructions and keep, and uh, we'll count the characters for you because as each section is limited by character. Yeah. Um, but uh, but this is just like a, a suggested uh, resource that the district has for you to use. You, by all means, you do not have to use a scholarship template if you don't want to. Uh, for me personally, I just drafted all my activities on a Google Doc. All right. And so uh, if you are selected to be a scholarship recipient, you will hear back in March 2023 before district convention uh, if you did receive a scholarship. And if you'll be a decon attendee, you'll actually be recognized for receiving a scholarship during the honors reception, along with all the graduating seniors and transfer students. But you don't have to go to decon in order to receive the scholarship. You'll receive the scholarship regardless of whether or not you're attending DCON. And, and yes, if you are notified that you're a scholarship recipient, uh, you will also receive at the exact same time instructions on how to claim your scholarship. Um, they'll send you like an email with a PDF attachment. You also probably get something in the mail. And when it, um, when it comes to like logistically um, the foundation, they will uh, send, they'll send it uh, their scholarship money directly to your school's financial aid office. And so um, wrapping up, so here are some additional um, scholarship opportunities that are available to you all as Circle K members, um, but uh, these are offered by the Kiwanis International Children's Fund. What I just talked about earlier is the CNH Children's Fund, like the CNH Kiwanis District. This is offered by the Kiwanis International Children's Fund. So these three scholarships, they're all due on February 1st of 2023, not 2022. I, I need to update that. Um, and, and, and yeah, um, you can all, uh, yeah, so basically the Kiwanis Children's Fund Scholarship, minimum amount of 2,500 could possibly be more. And you just need to be a dues paid member of a club in good standing. The John E. Mayfield Circle K Scholarship, the minimum amount of $1,000, a minimum GPA and to be eligible to apply, you need a minimum GPA of 2.5, and a dues pay member of a club in good standing. And if you are a current Circle K president right now, um, you could also apply for the past president scholarship. Um, the amount is $1,000. And uh, like the CNA Children's Fund Scholarship, uh, you need to have a minimum GPA of 2.5, be a dues pay member of a club of good standing. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you're currently a president. Yeah, here's just, these are just three additional scholarship opportunities that are available to you all as, as Ripple K members. And yeah, that is the end of the webinar. If you have any questions for me, now's a good time to ask. Um, but 
if there is like a private question or like a question that you forgot to ask, feel free to email me at mrne at cnacircleK.org. And yeah, and I'll, I'll go ahead, Sabrine. I noticed that for one of your community services that you put that wasn't associated with the university or Circle K, you mentioned, or like the example that you gave was Eagle Scout. And even though it was like up to current, it was pretty old, uh, as in like it began in 2013. Would it be appropriate to put something that I did in high school if it ended in my pre-frosh summer? Because um, I don't know. I know that you said that it doesn't have to be limited to the past yeah. year, but I've done quite a few things that I think are relevant that ended before I came to Berkeley, but after I graduated from high school. Mm, that's a that's a great question. So hmm, I would say uh, probably try to like list things uh, during college, um, but uh, it doesn't hurt to like uh, list things um, that you did before college if you can't fill up like the five sections, but only college stuff. So yeah, I would say it's fine to list uh, things that you did before college. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, seeing as there aren't any more questions, uh, just a quick reminder to uh, please sign in if you haven't already. And I will go ahead and end the recording. And thanks, thank you all so much for coming out and, and listening. And wow, this was a really quick one. Hmm.